Hello, my name is Lucy, I'm a student at the University of Oxford's Department of Earth Sciences, and I research the chemistry that went on in ancient lakes on the surface of the planet Mars. As we can't actually go there, yet, I've made miniature Martian lakes here in the laboratory to try and understand the kinds of chemistry that once went on there. And one of the important things I'm trying to understand is the effect of acidity on Martian rocks. This is Gale Crater, recently visited by NASA's Curiosity rover, which sent back many stunning images from the Martian surface like this one. Basically, I want to reconstruct the lake that once existed in Gale Crater, as well as others like it around 3.7 billion years ago, and I want to do this back in our lab in Oxford. This begs the question, how do we do this, but also why? Why are we interested in this back on Earth? The why is because, to understand the history of Mars, we need to become detectives, piecing together what few clues we have from measurements made by orbiters and landers to figure out Mars's history the same way we'd figure out our own planet's history here on Earth. We see lots of evidence for liquid water on the Martian surface, like these channels shown here. Mars is far too cold today for this, and one long-standing mystery is how Mars was once warm enough in the past to permit this flowing water. One idea is that carbon dioxide levels in the Martian atmosphere might have once been much higher in the past, creating a kind of greenhouse gas effect like we used to explain climate change here on Earth. But if we want to test this idea, we need to know where to look where we might find evidence of these elevated carbon dioxide levels. And this is where my lakes come in. And so on to the how. Basically, to make a miniature Martian lake, you need an oxygen-free sealed box, as there's no oxygen in the Martian atmosphere, you need some solutions with different pHs, some iron-rich powders to be the Martian surface, and time. In the lab, I can control how much carbon dioxide my lake water contains in my pretend Martian atmosphere, and look to see how this affects the pH of the water, and thereby what minerals will form. pH turns out to be really key, as it controls how much carbon dioxide, which is a weak acid, will dissolve in the water, and also how much iron gets released from my pretend Martian soil. This is because a small amount of carbon dioxide from Mars's atmosphere dissolves into the lake water. This is a reversible reaction, which balances out so that the more carbon dioxide there is in the atmosphere, the more there will be dissolved in the lake. Once dissolved in the water, the carbon dioxide can react with water to form carbonic acid, which is a weak acid. How acidic the lake is depends on how much carbon dioxide dissolves in the water from the atmosphere. Simply put, the acidity of the lake reflects the atmospheric concentration. So, if carbon dioxide levels were higher, the lake will become more acidic with a lower pH. The more acidic the lake, the more it will dissolve the rocks in its walls. These rocks contain metals like iron, in the form of oxides like iron oxide. Once the iron from the rock in the lake walls is dissolved into the water, the iron reacts with the carbonic acid there to form iron carbonate rocks. These get deposited on the lake floor and the lake walls, and might then get detected by human missions to Mars. In fact, in about 2010, the NASA Spirit rover found significant carbonate in Mars's Gusev crater, giving a tantalizing hint that there might be many more such rocks to find on the red planet. My experiments help us to understand how to decode the messages about Mars's past atmosphere that have been left in its surface rocks. Using these experiments, I aim to tell fellow scientists where on Mars to look and what kinds of rock types to look for that will give us windows into this most water-rich era of our planetary neighbor's history. Because the more we look at the surface of Mars, the more water-rich this history becomes. You never know, these rocks are so interesting that when we finally get humans to the red planet, it might be these rocks that they explore first.